Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation C VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be trying out one of the craziest teams that I've seen from Regulation C so far, featuring Midnight Lycan Rock with Scope Lens and No Guard, as well as Stone Edge, Skill Swap Metacham, Fisher Substitute Dondozo, Life Orb Mimikyu, and Fisher Ting Lu. Part of the idea is that the Metacham Skill Swap is really interesting because you can Skill Swap its ability onto Lycan Rock, allowing it to deal massive amounts of damage. Lycan Rock actually has No Guard as well, and so you can Skill Swap the No Guard onto Metacham, which then can Skill Swap it onto Dondozo or Ting Lu, giving you 100% accurate fishers. Now, in the course of this episode, I only pulled that off once, but if you do want to see that combo, I'll link the timestamp down in the description below. Either way, this team is just absolutely wild because Lycanroc with Scope Lens and Stone Edge honestly does so much damage, and in general, it plays in a way that I've really never seen a team play before in Regulation C. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thanks so much as always for watching. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, especially as we close in on 200,000 subscribers. So yeah, let's break down the team. First of all, a huge thank you to Kotaro for building and sharing this team. He's one of the most creative team builders I've ever seen in the history of competitive VGC, bringing Geomancy Smeargle to Worlds 2015, as well as Giratina Origin Form to Worlds Day 2 in 2022. And yeah, like, I saw this team and I was like, yep, yeah, makes sense that this came from him. It is so wild. I, I don't know if anyone else really in the world can build something like this. And so I always love using his teams. I've linked his Twitter down in the description below, as well as his YouTube channel and a team report written in Japanese. And he almost broke into the 1800s of the very first global challenge uh, global wi-fi tournament with this team which is really impressive i think he finished just outside of the top 150 so uh, he very likely qualified for japanese nationals using this composition which is also really cool to see now, the general idea is that Lycanroc here has Scope Lens as well as the Stone Edge. And so the idea is that no guard, you don't have to worry about missing your Stone Edge or Rock Slide, which is really nice. Scope Lens, Stone Edge, really strong combination, 50% chance to get a critical hit, really valuable given the amount of Intimidate in the format, especially given that the most common intimi Intimidators are Gyarados and the Arcanine. And so, yeah, the idea behind Lycanroc here is that you can actually get a lot of one-hit knockouts with Stone Edge, which your opponents generally don't expect. Water Terra here to help out against opposing water types. And, of course, one fun thing you can do is skill swap that No Guard away from the Lycanroc, get it onto Metacham, and then Metacham could skill swap it onto Dundozo or Ting Lu later on. Now, that's not the primary strategy with this team, and I think if you use this team and try to just go for that all the time, you're actually going to fail most of the time. I'd say in maybe 10 games I played with it, I was only able to execute it successfully maybe two or three times maximum. So you should not think about that as your number one priority, but there are often situations where that actually can come up as a potential way to win the game. So that's some food for thought. However, even just getting pure power onto Lycanroc means you can deal so much damage, like Scope Lens, Stone Edge crits, with that pure power is honestly no joke. So, Metacham here is a mix between utility with Fake Out and Skill Swap, as well as damage with Close Combat. Don't underestimate the amount of damage you can do with pure power and Close Combat, this thing really just packs a punch. And so, yeah, Metacham, Lycanroc, one possible lead with this team. Now, this team has Fisher on Ting Lu as well as Dondozo. Fisher is a very controversial move in VGC right now, especially on something like Ting Lu. I think what's actually really interesting is Dondozo having Fisher, because that's not actually very common, not very common on Dondozo. But what's really interesting about this is that it actually can kind of basically work as a counter into opposing Ting Lu's with Fisher. First of all, this Dondozo is really fast. It's jolly, as you can see here, with almost max speed investment, meaning that you outspeed so many Pokemon, of course, when you go for the combo with Tatsugiri. It also means that you do just outspeed a lot of Ting Lu's normally, right? If the Ting Lu doesn't really have speed investment, and very few, I haven't really seen Ting Lu run like jolly max speed, for example. Uh, so that means that Dondozo can like basically stall things out against opposing Ting Lu's, which is really nice. Uh, and so part of the theory behind this Dondozo is that like a lot of the times you can deal a ton of damage early game with Lycanroc Metacham, and then Dondozo can just come in and slowly start like getting KOs with Wave Crash, for example. Fisher is especially valuable against really bulky Pokemon that you struggle to knock out, and Substitute plus Protect and Leftovers is a really nice combo as well. And so the idea is that I've had games where essentially I'll use Lycanroc Metacham, pick up some quick knockouts, and then I bring out Dondozo Tatsu. They just have no way to actually deal damage to this. I can just stick on the field and keep clicking like Wave Crash or Fisher, for example. And like I mentioned, against opposing Team Lose, you can sub up in front of them. They do so little damage to you, and then uh, it's really hard for them to break the substitute, for example. And even if they land a Fisher, it just breaks the sub. It doesn't actually KO Dondozo outright if you have substitute up, which I think is really cool as well. 
So yeah, that's the theory behind this Dondozo. And of course, if you actually manage to get skill swap on Twitter, Tang Lu, it's going to look amazing. Tatsugiri here is Choice Scarf, pretty standard. Main thing to call out here is that it has Hydro Pump rather than something like Sleep Talk, for example. Hydro just allows you to deal more damage and have a single target attack, which is pretty nice. To round things out, you've got Life Orb Mimikyu with Trick Room. Uh, Mimikyu here with Metacham I actually find to be a pretty effective lead. This Pokemon is just fairly strong in the format, especially with Life Orb Play Rough into things like Dragonite, for example, as well as Chien Pao, Shadow Sneak for priority, and Trick Room is valuable since, like, the Mimikyu is pretty slow. Uh, Ting Lu is obviously incredibly slow. Um, you know, like Rock and Metacham are both, like, kind of in that mid-tier speed range, but Trick Room can be really valuable, especially into those, like, hyper-offense teams, for example. Final one to talk about here is AV Ting Lu. Not really anything too different about this Ting Lu. Uh, Fisher Ting Lu is really common right now, but I think it, on this team it makes even more sense because you have this like skill swap shenanigans, right? And so you can really uh, potentially set up Ting Lu for ultimate success if you're able to get that no guard onto it. This Pokemon in general though, Honestly, does a ton of damage. Incredible base stats across the board. Heavy slam primarily for things like Flutter Main and then Stomping and Rock Slide for good damage overall. I'd, I'd say the main thing is with this team, it's obviously very tempting to click Fisher often, but you have to think about like the amount of times that you will likely miss it. So I try not to rely on it unless I'm in a position where hitting it just like wins me the game immediately and like I don't really have a better offensive option to go for anyway. For example, Dondozo into Amoongus. It's like I could wave crash, but uh, if I have subbed up already, like I might as well just fish for Fisher a couple of times. Whereas like wave crash might not even be like a two hit or a three hit knockout, for example. So yeah. Anyway, that's it for the breakdown. In terms of modes, I've personally gone with like Lycanroc, Metacham, Metacham plus Mimikyu, uh, Ting Lu early lead as well. You could lead with Dondozo plus Metacham and then pressure the switch into Tatsugiri, for example. Uh, this doesn't play like a conventional Dondozo though, so I generally try to commit it to it a little bit later than normal. But yeah, that's it for the breakdown. Let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. So for weaknesses that I've run into, I think the first thing to note is that Fairy in general still hits pretty hard against the team. You do obviously have a Steel Terra with Dondozo, but yeah, you know, I've had games where I like just get led in against a Flutter Main and Flutter Main just applies offensive pressure, which is a little bit scary. That's not to say there aren't answers, right? For example, Mimikyu can pressure with Shadow Sneak. You've got Helping Hand plus Shadow Sneak as an answer into Flutter in particular, which I think is pretty cool. But if they're Focus Ash, for example, then that can cause some problems. So that's one thing to point out. Uh, Ting Lu here is Ground Terra, which which is good. It is kind of like a defensive terror. It's actually, I'd say, more of an offensive than a defensive terror, and so that means that you're still weak to water-type attacks, which can be really scary, as well as grass-type attacks, so keep that in mind. I honestly think, in my time using the Ting Lu, there were a lot of games where I was wishing I had a like more defensive terror on this Pokemon, and so that's a problem that I run into personally. Another issue is if you commit to Dondozo too early, you know, especially if you're up against like a flying type Pokemon, for example, you can't really Fisher into it. Um, and Dondozo here can obviously slowly chip away at opposing Pokemon with Wave Crash, but you do have to be pretty careful, uh, especially because, you know, you do end up taking some recoil from it. Now, Leftovers allows you to kind of get around that. But yeah, I think the main thing is this Dondozo isn't like other offensive Dondozos where you have three really strong attacks. Here it is just primarily Wave Crash. And I think like this team can really bait you into like thinking you want to click Fisher often. And so you might just end up wasting a lot of turns as well so you have to be very intentional when you click fisher and basically every time you end up clicking fisher i think one other thing that i've actually run into that's been a huge problem is chim pao uh for example the ting lu keeps the ice weakness even if it ground terras which is pretty scary chim pao can sacred sword into the dondozo which covers for the steel terra for example and it's got good coverage and outspeeds everything and so you know, obviously the team has a lot of damage in a champ pal. Like you could just rock slide it, you could just close combat it, you could shadow sneak it. I've had some games where I actually managed to get like the skill swap uh no guard combo on Slodozo or the Ting Lu, but then Champ Pao just ends up like surviving because of Focus Ash and they essentially two hit knockout me, which is really concerning. And so that's one other thing to watch out for. Honestly, this is one of the hardest teams that I've tried in Road to Ranked, I think, for this format. So it is not easy to just pick up and just start winning games immediately with it. It's a very clear example of a team where like the team builder had some very clear intentions. It's so well constructed, but because it's not very intuitive and a lot of these Pokemon are not very common, it's a lot harder, I think, to just pick up and start playing with immediately. But that's why I'm excited to feature it. So let's get into these games. All right, first game, and we are up against Megan, who I believe I actually played in a previous video. They're using the same team, which is pretty cool. And so in that one, I believe it was like Poison Terra Baxcalibur. And my Great Tusk was able to just like Earthquake to get a double KO, uh, which was nice. So in this one, I'm thinking we lead with the... Yeah, Mimikyu is actually pretty solid here, huh? With Life Orb, Play Rough. And Disguise. 
Because, like, I, I, I would love to go with the Medicham plus Lycanroc lead, which I actually don't think is that bad either. Helping Hand Close Combat, that's you know, pretty strong. The question is, do I think I can get Skill Swap off successfully in this one? And I, I probably don't want to bring Ting Lu, honestly. They don't have that many special attackers. Might just be Dozo Tatsu then. Feels weird to bring leave Mimikyu out in this one though. It's damage output is really solid. Especially with Trick Room. I don't know though. I think if we can get the combo off here, like there's no way for them to easily knock out Dondozo, so I'm still down to try it out here. So like the idea is skill swap, get the no guard on a Metacham, and then switch Dondozo in, and then skill swap onto the Dondozo. But that is a lot easier said than done. I think Mimikyu is probably the safer pick in this one. Trick Room honestly wouldn't have been a bad approach. Mercurial Zumarill. Uh, I could actually just fake out Azumarill here and Stone Edge to start. I honestly don't hate that. I can see Merkur going for a Terra here. Alright, they're going to taunt into my Metacham. So I can't skill swap very easily right now. Stone Edge hits though, which is nice. And that's just a KO. And that's why we have the uh, scope lens. Uh, that's actually a really big deal because now it means I can potentially just bring in Dondozo immediately. The main thing about bringing in Dozo is that like we're not actually doing that much with it other than just fishing for Fisher the entire time. But I am taunted with Metacham, so I have to be realistic about what I can do with it right now. Excalibur comes out. Uh, I would poison Terra here if I were them, I think. I don't really need to go for a Terra with these. Honestly, I'm thinking of just clicking close combat onto backs. Nah, I think I want to switch into Dozo and Protect. Yeah, I just, uh, okay, Backscalibur Protects, nice. I can Rock Protects. Liquidation into Protect, cool. See, the thing is, I'm still trying to see if I can actually get the skill swap stuff off. I think it's just not that easy to execute right now. Um, especially given the current game state. The question is, do we think Bex Caliber now goes for a Terra of its own? I just want to be a little bit careful about bringing Dozo out like this early on, but honestly, it might be a good position for it too. Okay, I'm actually going to switch back out into Metacham and Stone Edge here. I expect Baxcalibur to consider a Terra. Yeah. Okay, uh, that means I can wave crash you now, which is good. They're faster than Lycan Rock. We know they have Protect as well, so I could actually. Well, I was gonna say you could use Tossigiri to Draco Meteor, but then I just faint to play Rough, which is less than ideal. 
I go for breaking swipe. Okay. Two for two on stone edges. Nice. And we get another crit. And they liquidation. Okay, nice. That's huge. Hmm. We both committed our Terras right now. Man, I really want to go, like, skill swap here. And rock slide, which gives us a flinch chance. Nice. Okay, <laughs> if, if, um, if Azumarill flinches here or they end up targeting the, uh, Lycan rock instead of the Medicham slot... Then I can actually get the no guard. This is a pure power boosted rock slide as well, but I miss. Oh. No. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Given that, though, it means I can't get the no guard strats off. Wait, how did that happen? Because we, we skill swap Rock Slide onto Lycanroc, but it missed? Uh... Wait, I'm actually really confused by that. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we had no guard and we swapped it off. Yeah. Because I was looking at the screen. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it doesn't, like, show the difference here. Um, okay. Well, given that... We've got pure power on you. I think I just go into Dozo now and Wave Crash. Yeah, I think, like, that was really worth going for, because essentially I think it would have locked up the game immediately for us, where if Azumarill flinches there or they end up targeting the Lycanroc, then the next turn I just bring out the Dozo and Skill Swap. Um, but yeah, now I'm just going to commit to Dondozo. Lycanroc honestly put in so much work in this game, though, right? It got, like, Stone Edge crit onto Murkrow, Stone Edge onto the... Bax Caliber as well. I think with with this Dondozo team, you have to be a little bit careful, though, because it's like, theoretically, you could just miss every single Fisher, right? And so I don't want to be relying on it, especially if I'm not getting the skill swap onto it, but right now we're in a pretty good position with it. No Terra on their end, plus no Murkrow for Haze. Okay, and play rough does pretty minimal damage. Nice. So let's see what their final Pokemon is. Sandy Shocks. Cool. So we can just wave crash that pretty easily. It is booster energy. So we get a special attack boost. Okay. Uh, I'll go for a protect here for leftovers recovery. Azumarill essentially is not doing much into us right now. Uh, Lycanroc into Azumarill in the end game. I'll, I'll have Tatsu as well. Honestly, Azumarill kind of cleans up, but oof, that's huge. Our Dozo is faster than Sandy Shocks, which means... We should just be able to one-shot it with Wave Crash, and then it's just Dundozo against the Azumarill endgame. And this is, like, the endgame where I do want to use Fisher, right? Because at that point, it's, like, it's just pretty consistent. Honestly, we could probably Wave Crash our way to a victory as well. I'm just going to Wave Crash here first in the Shocks. I'm just sad I couldn't get the combo off in this one, but, yeah, the fact that we're faster here means we outspeed and just KO. Beautiful. And that's what makes this team so scary. You have the pressure of Fisher, but I didn't even click it once in this battle so far, and it's a 3v1 at this point. I guess Steel Terra could have been useful here. Um, but with leftovers now, so we'll heal back. I shall protect. And then I can set up a substitute as well. A single play rough miss. Well, like, the, the thing is, like, play rough also has limited PP, right? So that's another thing they have to watch out for. 
I am curious how much wave crash does, but I think one thing to actually be a little bit careful about here is the amount of recoil we take from it. Um, and Fisher is 30%, right? So the odds if we use Fisher twice of us hitting one of them is actually basically a coin flip. Um, I'm going to go for a sub here. I don't think they even break the sub. Okay. Let's play rough. Nice. Yeah, and like, you know, I could have gone for Steel Terra with Dozo throughout the course of this match, but I really wanted to survive with Lycanroc earlier, so we'll protect here. I think one thing I have to get used to is the fact that Lycanroc has no guard, because every time I click Stone Age, I get so nervous. Like, I, this team is so unintuitive to use, right? That's why I was confused earlier when I skill swapped and I missed, and I was like, wait, how did I miss? I have no guard, but that's because Lycanroc no longer had the no guard, right? <laughs> Anyway, we're just in a position where we're, like, slowly stalling up uh, and, and healing back as well. Uh, I do want to see how much Wave Crash does first before clicking Fisher, just out of curiosity. I honestly think it does, like, 25 to 30 here. Oh, that does way more. Okay, we definitely don't need to be clicking Fisher then. Okay, the liquidation. At this point, Lycanroc still has that Stone Edge, plus, like, Tatsugiri is Muddy Water, so we have enough damage to beat the... Uh, Azumarill. I just want to play safely in this endgame to avoid any crit shenanigans, right? Um, although at this point, I think another wave crash actually just KOs. Cool. So I think this is a good example of a game where we have Fisher available to us, but I didn't click it once because I think like it could have actually baited me into really bad positions. For example, what could have been really bad for me is if the... Um, the Bax Caliber earlier did not go for the Poison Terra, and I commits Ladondozu immediately. Because the, then the problem with that is, I don't do that much damage with Wave Crash, and so I might be, like, incentivized then to click, like, Fisher more frequently. The problem with that is then, like, I could just keep getting misses after misses after misses, right? And so that's why I wanted to, like, exhaust my resources earlier on and try to not rely on that until I absolutely needed to. And the reality is I actually just absolutely didn't need to at all because Wave Crash just cleared everything. And at the end of the day, Dondozo is still an offensive monster just with Wave Crash alone, right? Uh, even into Azumarill, which resists it. So, yeah. Uh, the reality is that getting this meta champ combo off with Lycanroc and Dondozo can be really difficult, but Lycanroc's incredible in this one, right? Like, it got that critical hit to start, uh, KO that Murkrow immediately, and getting rid of Mur Murkrow is so crucial because then it just means no haze for Dondozo later on. And then we kind of force the terror out from the um, the opposing side as well on the Backscalibur. So uh, it requires so much work to actually get this like skill swap shenanigan off. Uh, and so it's not going to happen very frequently. It just enables some interesting lines of play. Uh, but even without it, this team has so much pure strength. And I think that game really demonstrates it. So this team is just absolutely wild. Okay, next game here. We've got Baxcalibur, Flutter, Chiyu, Gyarados, Amoongus, and Tainlu. So another Baxcalibur. Uh, they've got Gyarados, which obviously can wall the Dozo. Um, Tainlu with AV. It's pretty good, right, with Heavy Slam? If I were them, I'd prioritize Baxcalibur. Amoongus can cause some real issues for me here, right? I don't have a Grass Terra. Sub Dozo is the best answer into it. I think Mimikyu is certainly worth a mention here. Maybe I don't need to go with Dozo. Like, I could go Mimi and Ting Lu instead. I think Dozo would sub, though, it's just so good into the Amoongus, because it just, like, really demolishes it. So, I'll still go with this. But I, I do think this is a great matchup, potentially, for Team Lu. Like, we've got Chiyu and Flutter, so I've got AV, Ground Terror. I can just Ground Terror and start going for Heavy Slam or Stomping Tantrum, for example. Let's see what they go with. Flutter and Chiyu. Okay. Flutter and Chiyu... Booster on the Flutter main. Worried about Ghost Scarf to you right now. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, Ghost Terra here would be really bad because I can't fake out either slot. So maybe Mimikyu would have been the right move here. I'm thinking we just fake out in Stone Edge. That works. Gyarados, maybe? It's Mungus. Okay. Rocky Helmet? Nope. Just Dazzling. Not bad, not bad. Uh, so far, I'll take it. Stone Edge, connect some Flutter, and we're three for three on crits, so it's one and eight to have landed every crit with that. Man, Scope Lens, like, I just haven't seen it at all, and, uh, since Sword and Shield, and it's actually kind of a beast on Lycanroc. Scope Lens, no guard, Stone Edge, what a fun combo. Seriously. Chiyu comes out. Okay, I think skill swap is probably out of question here. But that's okay, because what are they going to do against Dozo substituted up? If I were my opponent, I'm clicking Heat Wave, and then maybe Spore onto you. I'm down to Detect here. I suppose they could Dark Pulse. I went for Detect Rock Slide. Might not be Scarf Chiyu either. Okay, Amoongus Rage Powders, you know. Did they Heat Wave though? Dark Pulse? Good play. Yeah, not much I could have done there. Mm. Time to go into Dozo. What's interesting here is if we actually just had, like, regular Dozo, we would have been in better shape right now, because I would just be able to, like, I don't know. Well, it depends on what regular Dozo is. There's so many different Dundozos these days, anyway. If they're going for Rage Powder like that, it makes me think they're not max speed. But are they going to be slower than this? Probably not. Okay, I'll go out into Tatsu and then set up my Substitute. Uh, we are going to have to click Fisher in this one, and so we are at mercy of Fisher. But we'll see how it plays out. I'm going to switch in Tatsugiri. I don't know, leading Mimikyu could have been solid, because I would have been able to actually Trick Room. But then the question... Like, Mimikyu... I was just really worried about Amoongus in this one, and so I felt like the only way to really handle Amoongus effectively was uh, Dundozo under Substitute, which is exactly why I've positioned myself like this. Yeah, they just Dark Pulse. That's a lot of damage. This really boils down to what their final one is, right? I think that Dark Pulse knocks out the sub. I can't defensively tear around it. Protect here for leftovers. Okay, Amoongus switches. Into Ting Lu. Okay. Oh my gosh, are we going to have a Fisher War? I protect. Man, if this were Flying Terra Dozo, I actually think we would just have it locked up after KOing Chiyu. I think I just wave crash here. It's interesting they made that switch, actually. Did not expect that. Uh, the reality is it honestly really favors Dondozo right now, but... Ah, oh, great switch. Great switch. Okay. Yeah, the problem now is if they have Runation, which they should, and then you Terra with... Yeah, that was a really good play. And this is the problem of having to, like, rely on Fisher right now, right? Because, like, I'm not even clicking it just because I'm a little bit scared. They have Water Terror, which is, like, the perfect Terror to have against us. 
And if you have Runation, what you can do is just Runation and then put me to sleep with Spore. So now, I am at mercy of uh, hitting Fisher. Could just keep Wave Crashing. That actually didn't do bad damage. Ah, they just click Stomping though. Okay. But they might have Runation still. They just want to click Stomping first to break the sub. Oh, that does not break the sub. That's huge. Okay, we protect. I can't sub again, though. Oh, you know, if anything, like, that actually works against us, because now I bet another Stomping Tantrum breaks it. <laughs> it's been, like, what, 20 minutes of battling so far, and I actually haven't clicked Fisher once, but I think it is finally time. <laughs> Okay, Amoongus protects. Yeah, they stomping again. Hmm, Amoongus protecting there is interesting, but they probably just want to scout out for if I end up going for a Terra. Steel Terra works against me here, though. If we had Grass Terra or Flying Terra, it'd be much more favorable. But Steel is actually just the worst Terra to have it again to their team right now. Alright, let's go for it. We missed the first time. That's fine. Here, stomping. That should break the sub, because they dark pulsed already earlier, right? Oh, wait, no, they didn't. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. I protect. Yeah, I mean, the reality is my opponent is just not really doing any damage to me either. And so we're caught in this weird game. But essentially, like, ooh, they do switch into uh, Chiyu. Okay. So I think this next turn, they're just going to switch Chiyu back out into Amoongus. There's no way they let me just take the knockout on Chiyu for free. Okay. Yep, just another stomping. Uh, if we KO Amoongus, I feel really confident in... Uh, I, I was going to say feel really confident in winning the game, but I guess actually knocking out Ting Lu is a pretty big problem for me here as well. Like, we we have to consider PP in this one, right? Because I have 22 left, essentially. But I'm going to Fisher Chiyu expecting Amoongus to switch in right now. Wow! Unless you're Sash Chiyu, that's a pretty bold play to make, I think. They're probably just getting impatient there. Because I was wondering if I just, like... Wave crashed into there? Would I have just won? Alright, let's see. Second Fisher attempt. 0 for 2. Okay. Um. I just realized Protect and Sub aren't PP maxed here, which also could work against me. Okay, so we're gonna Protect. We are going to sub. Now we're going to go from there. Yeah, and the idea behind subbing is just, just blocks to Dark Pulse. I don't... Are they sashed on Chiyu? Otherwise, like, how, why are you playing like this, right? I'm getting, like, a little impatient on my end, and I want to just click Wave Crash. Because they've, like, given me multiple opportunities to potentially just knock out that slot. And knocking it out immediately here is huge. Ah, uh, this turn I'm actually really thinking about it. Nah, I think sub is still correct here. Okay. Oh, what a doozy of a game. So we block Spore once again. I mean, this is why I brought Dozo, though, because I just, like, didn't see how I was beating Amoongus in the long run, because it could just put my entire team to sleep, and I don't really actually have good damage into it. Like, landing a Fisher into it is actually the best way of KOing it. If I were them, I would Rage Powder now and um, Dark Pulse again. I'm going to Fisher Amoongus. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe Wave Crashing just was the right play last turn. And we hit! Third time is the charm, baby. Uh, that Dark Pulse, by the way, didn't even break the sub, which was huge. There we go. Nice.
I was gonna say that was really critical, but because the sub wasn't broken, uh, we didn't actually necessarily need to hit that one. I needed to hit one of the first four, I think. <laughs> oh. But this this is why this team is a nightmare to go up against, right? Because, uh, yeah, like, you're kind of just stuck dealing with the substitute for forever. Now they decrease their own special attack as well, so let's protect again for more recovery. I think, by the way, like, playing this game out, this is a great lesson in why you should actually PP max your Pokemon. Uh, they totally might be Fisher on the... Ting Lu. It's always right to go for a substitute here, because Chiyu outpaces me, but then their Dark Pulses are doing less damage now because of their own Ting Lu. <laughs> They've got Fisher as well. Oh, boy. This is uh, Regulation C summarized in a nutshell. This is why I was also, also saying if we had Flying Terra, I think this would honestly just be a wrap. So, I'm going to set up Sub here. There's Dark Pulse. They should break the Sub this time around. Yep. And now, their Dark Pulse is definitely not breaking my Sub. So I can just finally Wave Crash that slot. Yeah, they go for Fisher. Uh, I should be counting Fisher PP on their end, honestly. That's already two attempts. I don't think they'll click it this next time around. So now I go Wave Crash into Chiyu. Oh, took us so long to get here, but things are finally moving. Yep, they don't break the sub. Finally Wave Crash into Chiyu. Are you sashed? This thing was not sashed. I had like three attempts to KO it. I didn't. I thought it was specs based off how much it was doing, but I don't know. Are they stomping? Yep. We should be super well positioned right now because all I need to do is just land one more Fisher. Um, but you can see why, like. I think if we had Grass Terror on Ting Lu, I absolutely would have just played towards that instead. Um, let me just make sure I don't run out of my time. Yeah, we're good on that regard. I protect here, sub, and then, like, Stomping just does such little damage at this point. So, um, like, they, they can't really win the f war in Fisher here. Because essentially, they're going to need to connect multiple. And uh, if I set up Substitute... Actually, I've never I've never seen this interaction before. Um, like, Substitute and Fisher. I, I thought that... Uh, I thought that it would just break the substitute. Yeah, it does. Oh, that's part of the reason why this is so good, right? But I just wanted to verify that. So we sub here. And they've already used three fishers, so they only have five left at max. They had Runation this whole time. Hmm. I was expecting that way earlier on in this battle. Okay. We're running out of Protect PP, though. I <laughs> so, this is definitely a doozy of a game, but... My opponent's not giving up, and I can definitely understand why. At this point, like, I don't know. I feel like Wave Crash just does such minimal damage, and I'm taking Recoil from it as well. I have to be realistic about the fact that I actually don't have that much PP left with uh, Protect. So, I'll just use my remaining five Fishers and see if any hit. Okay, one for five. That one doesn't connect. That's okay. I'm gonna go for stomping tantrum. Earlier, two stompings didn't even break sub. Yeah, nice. Okay. I don't think I need to go for protect right now. Just go for another Fisher. Oh, they actually end up forfeiting. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, like, I feel like if they were going to play it out until that point, there was maybe still more potential for them, but may maybe they just realized, like, hey, I'm not going to win in the long run. Um, I think one win con you theoretically could play towards is hoping that Fisher doesn't have enough PP, but, yeah, like, what's interesting here is, essentially, like, we didn't really give our opponent any breathing room, right, and uh, it, it feels a little bit weird to click Fisher so much, but with this Dondozo set, like, it's actually pretty in your favor, because, like, I missed the first two and it was fine, right, we did finally land that one on Mungus, but, like, you know, the odds of you using three fishers in a row and missing all three are actually pretty slim, you know? And so, uh, as soon as we landed that one onto Amoongus, like, Chiyu is so frail as well, it just faints to a single wave crash, and, like, 
one of the reasons, like I mentioned, why you would want to use this Ting Lu is, or sorry, this Dondozo is because it has that favorable matchup into the Ting Lu, right? And so, yeah, I just wanted to double check the mechanics during the game, make sure that I wasn't messing anything up there. But yeah, the idea is that we outspeed them. So even if they try to Fisher us, we can just keep substituting to block that one hit knockout immediately. And it's a really nice counter into the Fisher Ting Lu that people are using right now. So, oof. That was a marathon, but I think it's a good way to showcase how you can utilize the team because once again, like there's no Grass Terror or Safety Goggles or Grass Pokemon on this team. So Amoongus would have caused some really big issues otherwise if I did not play towards Sondozo. I felt like this was the only way to effectively deal with that uh, on the opposing side. And yeah, I hopefully showcased how we can deal. Like Dozo essentially 3 beat one right? The uh, first got the knockout on Amoongus, then knocked out the Chiyu, and then we're in endgame against the Ting Lu where I still had like four Fisher PPs left. Even if we missed all four of those, I still would have been able to like slowly chip away at Wavecraft and then like the team loot just does such minimal damage to dozo and we still had a couple protects and substitutes uh that is where though i think if we were pp max i'd feel a little bit more confident because i would have likely uh you know ended up using all of the pp with those moves but yeah oh okay we've got jump love here which i featured on the channel uh pretty recently if you want to see me try out jump love check out the video in the description below this is a completely different team though there's not even torkoal which is fascinating um it's NDD, Armor Rouge, Ting Lu, Flutter, Brute Bonnet, and Jump Luff. Huh. I think it might be time to show Mimikyu some love. Life or Play Rough here really slaps, I think. Uh, Medicham is questionable, although Pure Power Close Combat is really strong. Honestly, Indy the Armor usually scares me a little bit, but I could just go with like Lycanroc Mimikyu. See, they have Ting Lu, so I'm inclined to just bring Dongdozo. The thing is, if I'm bringing Dongdozo, I'm essentially committing to this like Fisher stuff, right? And I honestly don't think I need to in this one with Medicham and Ting Lu in the back. So let's try this out. So far, I've brought down Dozu in both of the first two matches. I want to see what it's like if I don't bring it. And the reason why I think it's not as necessary here is because I actually think we have enough offense between Mimikyu, Medicham, Lycanroc, and Ting Lu. Brute Bonnet's a little bit scary, though, but I've got close combat and play rough into that. And helping hand support from Lycanroc. But it's going to be Flutter and Bonnet. Okay. Flutter and Bonnet. Uh... Attack? Okay. Uh, turn one, I think we just double protect and scout out for what they want to do. Because uh, I, I think a Terra here certainly makes sense. And so, like, you know... They actually just... I wonder if they're double protecting if they're going for this. Because, like, not tearing your Brute Bonnet here and then making that play I think is really risky. So I expect Brute to also try to Terra here, but let's see. Or sorry, I, I meant to say protect, but no, they actually just opted for seed bomb. Wow. Cause I want to just go helping hand, life or play rough. But they they might just protect now. I just like I don't know. They didn't they didn't protect last turn, which is really shocking to me. Nice. They try to sucker punch into the lichen rock slot. That's huge. Uh, cause if that went into Mimic, they could have gone Dazzling Shadow Ball into Mimikyu and that would have been really bad. Oh, that is so rough. Uh, I needed to hit that. Wow. Uh, I actually, that's like game defining. It's funny, out of all the moves to miss, play rough. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to go Helping Hand and then actually just Shadow Sneak here. I'm kind of behind in this game, so I feel the need to make a big play. They know I have Play Rough at this point. Nice. Are you focused, Ash, though? Oh, okay. Wait, I was like, that's bulky enough to survive, but it is sashed. Yeah, that was like the worst thing to run into. Oof. Oh, that's so. that's such a shame. Life Orb. Helping hand boosted play rough into brute bonnet, and the idea is by clearing the bonnet, it opens the door for Ting Lu. Uh, but I think I just lose now. 
it's funny because this team does have a bunch of moves you can miss, but with no guard, you actually don't end up missing them with Lycanroc. Uh, and so the only moves you actually really would miss are Mimikyu, Play Rough, and then Fisher. <laughs> we miss Life or Play Rough out of all of them. That's kind of funny to me, but that's okay. I, I honestly, like, I'm pretty happy with how I played, and so I don't really regret it. The, the question is then, how could I have played differently against this lead? Honestly, Mimikyu was the best possible lead against it. Like, I think our lead was really good into it, quite frankly. Because once again, if we get the knockout onto this, it opens the door for Ting Lu, because then I can just Terra Ting Lu. I think Ting Lu can actually sweep my opponent's entire team. It's also still technically not over, so I don't want to give up yet. Hmm. I think if they mess up here and just let me close combat them, Terra. I, I went for Rockside to cover for a switch. Uh, Armor Rouge coming in? Yeah. What is that? Oh, they brought a jump fluff. Okay, hold on. And they went for a Terra? Oh, Fairy Terra, I'm sure, right? Dude, how sick would it have been if I clicked fake out onto that slot? Oh, that would have been such a nasty read. Okay, but this is still doable, actually, because of Vessel of Rune. They also gave up their attack boost on the um, bonnet. Yeah, like, like basically the win condition in this game early on was just knockout bonnet, because I honestly think Ting Lu would have swept their entire team, even without Fisher. Just the combo of Heavy Slam and Rock Slide would have been incredible here. I can also skill swap Pure Power now onto Ting Lu. Oh, they went for Moonblast as well. Onto Metacham! Oh, wow. Okay, this should be a double kit. Why Why did they Terra there if they were going to do that? Huh. Okay. Not sure Rock Slide KOs, though. Oh, we could also miss Rock Slide. I... Oh, that's sick. That's really cool. <laughs> Rocky Helmet. Wow, really neat. Man, if I had actually gone for a Detect there, maybe we could have pulled something off. Ah, oh, Rockside didn't do enough anyway, though. Okay. Uh, if I skill swapped? No, probably not enough still. Yeah, like, the miss into them being Sash was basically the, the one-two punch that did it in for us here. Bonnet comes out. Well, kind of have to click Fisher here. They just Sleep Powder. Train up Rocky Helmet Jump Fluff. Very cool. It's just so funny out of all the moves I could have missed. How much does Seed Bomb do? Ooh, that is a hefty amount. And Fisher will miss. So that'll be game over. Yeah, I don't know. In terms of leads, would I have changed anything up now knowing their Focus Sash? I honestly wouldn't have. Because I, like, got everything I wanted in order to actually beat that Brute Bonnet. But in the end, it wasn't enough. Although, to be honest, because they were strengths at Jump Pluff, that's a really good matchup into the Ting Lu. Because, like, you just continuously decrease my attack. So I'm actually not sure I would have won anyway because it was that specific Jump Pluff set. That's a really cool set. Rocky Helmet Strength Sap. Uh, I was curious what set it was going to be. And, yeah, initially I was like, okay, if I knock out Brute Bonnet, like... The Ting Lu just cleans up, and if it were like a non-bulky jump fluff, like can't heal, it would. But because the Ting Lu, or sorry, because they can actually heal up with that, I actually think that like uh, basically Ting Lu would keep clicking Fisher against everything other than jump fluff. But I actually should just lose the one v one against jump fluff. I guess the question is how jump fluff does damage to me as well, and if that turn one went or turn two went more favorably, um, then I actually would probably have more resources in the end of the game as well. For example, like Lycanroc then should survive for a little bit longer. Because that turn they went Sucker onto Lycanroc and then Dazzling. So we, we would have KO'd the Flutter and then I would have been able to just switch Lycanroc out directly into the... Um, yeah, into the Ting Lu and then go from there. So yeah, wish we could have played it out uh, if the play rough didn't miss, but that's just part of the game, obviously. And you have to accept that when you're using this team. You've got uh, play rough on Mimikyu, you've got Rock Slide on on Ting Lu, and obviously you have Fisher on Ting Lu as well as the um, Dundozo. So you're gonna miss attacks, but uh, it was just funny, like the out of all the attacks, uh, and like that felt like the worst one, just because like I positioned myself in a way to try to KO the brute bonnet. But hey, that's the game.
Okay, Indidi, Rabska, Armor Rouge, Annihilate, King Gambit, and Iron Hands. It's like a Series 1, sorry, Series 2 Hard Trick Room team. Man, I'd love to get some of the skill swap shenanigans off in this one then. How do I do that though? Metacham, Lycanroc, Lee, Ting Lu in the back. Honestly, even regular Dozo here is interesting to me. Otherwise, it's Mimikyu. Maybe he does have Life Orb, Play Rough, and can reverse Trick Room, so I should probably go with that. Okay. Let's see if we can get the skill swap shenanigans off. What's an ideal lead? Iron Hands would be ideal, because then they would try to fake out me, maybe. Okay. This could work. Booster energy on hands, interesting. Attack, okay. And Psychic Seed. Uh, so with this lead, I'd expect them to like... Terra this, try to target down this. I'm down to skill swap Rock Slide on turn one. Because if we flinch and prevent Trick Room, Oh, that works, okay. <laughs> if I flinch right now, I just go into Ting Lu next turn. And get that going. So here's Rock Slide. This is... Oh my gosh, that's so much damage. I could have considered Stone Edge there, huh? Yeah, that actually probably was the better play in retrospect. Um, I would expect them to go for a fighting type attack now. Onto this. I mean, a fighting type attack is really bad, but I could switch into Mimikyu. So I'm thinking detect here and then bring up Mimikyu this turn. Yeah, Stone Edge would have been sick, huh? I would have prevented Trick Room, and then I would have been able to just switch in Ting Lu the next turn. Or even just attack further. They're gonna go for a Terra here, sure. With hands. Electric Terra. That's interesting. Okay, uh, it's pretty weak into Ting Lu, though. I detect... Yep, Drain Punch. Cool. Doubled up onto that slot though, that's a good play. So I'm hoping now they're worried about me reversing Trick Room. And like wild charge into the Mimikyu slot. Because what I want to do is skill swap and then get out Ting Lu. And then Terra Ting Lu next turn. And then we'll have 100% accurate fishers. Okay. I'm very happy to see that. Oh. Definitely didn't expect Earthquake, but that's a pretty cool way to get a free switch in right now. But hey, we got No Guard onto the Ting Lu.
And then I can Terra Ting Lu next turn. And if we make it out of Trick Room, Ting Lu might just one-shot everything. So that's what I'm hoping for right now. Took a little bit of setup to get here, and we're still not out in the clear yet. Oh, Armor Rouge is interesting. Air Balloon. <laughs> well, that's one way to counter this. Uh, I'm gonna just Terra Ting Lu here. What do I want to do with this slot? I think probably just Detect. I'm down to Detect. Terra. Fisher. Hands. We've built up an early lead. Uh, Ting Lu in general here is quite solid into Armor Rouge. Uh, you know, fighting type attack onto this will certainly hurt, but shouldn't KO us. Okay. Oh, they go for Earthquake. I'm more than okay with that. Shouldn't do that much. Yep. <laughs> hey! 100% accurate Fisher. Bye-bye, Iron Hands. Although now I question if my Terra was actually even worth it there. Uh, outspeeding Armor Rouge here is also quite nice, obviously. Energy Ball. Okay. Uh, I don't love that special defense drop. What's their final Pokemon? Rabska. Okay. Uh. Last turn of Trick Room and Terrain. They should click Expanding Force here. Don't really have too much value in keeping Metacham around. This might be Focus Sashed. So I'm going to double up on the Rapska. Does Psychic KO me with that special defense drop? It might. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> it's fine though, because now we just get Lycanroc and Mimikyu in the end game, and they've already committed their Terra. I think without that special defense drop, I would have expected to survive, but honestly, it is okay. Funnily enough, like, Ting Lu would have been better off not terroring there. But I was expecting close combat, obviously. Anyway, no more terrain for them. I have, uh... No Guard, Stone Edge here. And Shadow Sneak from this. I don't really care about armors that much, right? I'm just worried about this being Focus Ashed. I don't want it to get a Revival Blessing off. I'm double up into it. <laughs> yes! <gasps> nice. Shadow Sneak, Lycanroc cannot miss this Stone Edge. Oh, let's go. Man, this game had everything. We got the No Guard onto the Ting Lu. Which guaranteed the one hit KO onto Iron Hands. They had a lot of interesting things. Electric Terra, EQ, Seed. Anyway, Stone Edge now. And then Lycanroc honestly put in so much work in this endgame as well. So Sneak. Air Balloon pops. The Air Balloon also made things actually so much harder for me. Because if they didn't have Air Balloon, Ting Lu would have been able to just one-shot the... Um, the Armor Rouge with the Fisher. But, like, they had the air balloon, and then they had that special defense drop onto the Ting Lu as well, so then Rapska could actually finish me off. And Rapska actually outsped me under Trick Room, which isn't really too much of a surprise, but oof. <laughs> it is not easy to get this combo off, but we managed to pull it off here. That being said, I had to commit so many resources to do it, so that's one of the things about using this team, right? You want to be careful about actually committing to it, because often it might just be better to save it uh, until... Uh, and, and, like, it, you, you spent so many turns going for it. In this one, I just, like, saw the opportunity to potentially get it off. Also, could have, like, like I said, I don't think I played this perfectly. I think, like, Stone Edge turn one, if I crit onto Indy and get the KO there, like, the chances of the crit are way higher than flinching. When I say way higher, I guess, like, uh, a little bit higher. But, yeah, it's 50% for the 
crit and we're guaranteed to hit with stone edge there whereas flinch it's 30 percent chance to flinch but 90 percent oh no, sorry it's guaranteed to hit as well so it's like 20 percent chance higher essentially if we crit there we knock out entity immediately then turn two i can just switch like and rock out into the um ting lu but yeah it is pretty cool having 100 percent accurate fishers and even though ting lu was pretty strong into iron hands like iron hands threatens us with the super effective close combat uh, and being able to get a one hit knockout with fisher is really really nice so yeah that's what this combo can do it takes a lot of setup obviously to get there but happy to have showcased it anyway that's gonna be it for this one it was definitely a wild set of battles and i had a lot of fun so yeah this team is really crazy I i'm honestly really impressed by the lycanroc in particular it's also obviously really cool to use metacham but yeah lycanroc with no guard scope lens honestly hits like an absolute monster i feel like when i saw this team i hyper fixated on like the ting lu and the don dozo with the fishers um but in the end i feel like we were able to feature all of the pokemon a little bit throughout the course of this episode which i'm obviously really happy about so yeah thanks so much as always for joining me and i'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.